Hi guys, it's Miss Cronister. Welcome to week three. I hope you guys are all doing well and I hope you are kind of getting the feel for the whole Blackboard format and how this online learning thing is going to work. Um, if you feel unsure about anything or if you're feeling overwhelmed or or anything just come talk to me all right I want you guys to all feel good about what you're doing be confident and how to make this all work and I want you guys to be successful here so come find me email me um, and and we'll we'll figure out a way to get you some help if you need it all right so in week three you guys are going to start with activity 1.8 in the springboard activities um, the first thing you're going to do is read a couple different stories. One, one's a story, like a traditional story, and the other one's a poem. But you will notice they are about the exact same thing. So the topic in both of those is the exact same thing. It's about two boys. They um, cross the railroad tracks. They're, they're Hispanic boys, and they're supposed to stay in this one part of town, and they cross the railroad tracks and go to this white area and um, end up getting beaten up because of it. But it's really cool to read this because one's in prose, which is just traditional paragraph format, and the other one's in a poem. So the same author wrote the same story, but in two different ways. And each way kind of has a different effect, right? So after you read those, the, the poem and the story, you're going to do number five in the springboard activity and number seven, just those, all right? And I've got them both in the announcements, so you can like copy and paste this and, and submit your assignment that way if you want. So... The first thing you're gonna do is a graphic organizer. It's called a raft chart. So raft stands for role, audience, format, and topic. So whenever you write a story, you're gonna write from a specific role, right? These were written from um, his little brother's perspective. So that was the role of the narrator. And whenever you write something, you're writing to a specific audience. So depending on what you're writing, you're gonna to write to certain people or hope to reach certain people. Uh, and then there's the format. So one of these is in a poem format. One of these is in prose format. So whenever you have a something you want to write, you're going to pick a format to write it in. And then you're going to have a topic to write on, right? Topic is just what it's about. So just to help you guys understand how to do the, the raft chart, first what I did for you is um, I did what the role, audience, format, and topic is in the in the springboard activities in that story and the poem. So the role in both of them um, is written from the perspective of two Hispanic kids from the wrong side of the tracks. So it's kind of like, a, a, we've probably heard that phrase before, you're from the wrong side of the tracks. So the role in both those stories was from the, the little boy's perspective. The audience, I thought the audience that the author was trying to reach would be like a um, an audience kind of appeal to a sympathetic audience probably meant um, to identify with people who felt left out before or felt like they didn't belong somewhere or couldn't go somewhere. So I think that's who he's writing to. And then the format, there's two different formats. One was, one was the prose, just the story. One was the poem. And then the topic in both of them was two kids who crossed the, crossed the railroad tracks to go get some groceries and, and they get beat up because of it. So your job now is to write from a different perspective. So you're gonna pick a different role and you're going to fill out this chart. So you're gonna pick a different role, different audience, different format you would write it in, um, or I guess it doesn't have to be a format if you wanted to do this, a same format for a certain reason. And then a, the topic. So here's my example, because I know that can be kind of confusing. So um, if you noticed in the poem, the boy said that he was kind of like praying to his long dead Indian grandmother. So I thought, oh, it'd be cool to write from her perspective. So my role, um, my new role would be to write from the kids' long dead Indian grandmother. She's, she's my new narrator now. So now I'm going to think like I'm writing from her perspective. So her audience, if I was writing from her perspective, I think her audience would be like grandmothers or mothers, maybe parents who have had to watch their kids go through something painful and and wanted to help them but wasn't weren't able to. And my format, my new format that I would pick to write it in, um, since she's Native American, I thought um, to write a song would be cool because Native Americans are very like musical and artsy. Um, so I thought maybe she'd write like a song or a poem because that again is like more creative, I feel like, which would fit with um, the Native American grandmother 
And now my new topic, so the new thing that my um, poem or song would be about would be like an angel. So the topic of my, my song would be an angel watching over relatives from above, seeing them go through struggles and wanting to come in and, and save them but not being able to, um, wishing you could take their pain away but not being able to. So that would be a totally different story than the boys going to the store. It'd be from her perspective. So now you guys are going to do the same thing. You guys are going to pick a different person who could have been watching this, who could also be somehow involved in this situation. Maybe it's a store owner. Maybe it's um, like a bystander or another kid who told the boys, guys, don't do that. That's crazy. Don't do that. Um, what would he have said? So there's many different roles that you could or many different lenses you could look through this story at and come up with kind of like a variation of the topic a different audience you might be writing to um, and that sort of thing so you could even do like a public service announcement I just thought would be cool so maybe like somebody is writing a public is like a maybe like a teacher is teaching them like don't go over there because this is what could happen or or something like that um, so anyway work with that then on number seven so you're just doing number five and number seven on um, springboard activity 1.18 all right or sorry 1.8 1.8 um, and they're both in the announcement so just do what the announcement says and you're going to be golden all right so we are going to do an interview right for our embedded assessment um, activity and there are some questions that you are going to answer as if you were one of the boys. So you can either be the brother or you can be the brother, like the brother who saw his brother get beat up or you can be the brother that got beat up. And you're gonna answer those questions. Make sure you do quality responses. So really pretend like you're one of those, one of those kids who, who lived that situation. Sorry, I'm moving my phone right now because it's sliding down. All right, so that's activity 1.8. For activity 1.9, I don't know if any of you are UFC fans, but you are going to be reading an interview of a UFC fighter. Um, so this guy, Brian O'Connell, Connor, sorry, he um, interviews Chuck Liddell. So he, um, he's, he's got like this story. So it's an interview, but it's more like a story of what happened while they were together. That is exactly what you guys are gonna do for your embedded assessment. So I really want you to pay attention to what O'Connor did because you guys are gonna be doing the same thing, all right? Your topic's gonna be um, interviewing somebody about their post-secondary education experience. So you're not going to get to interview UFC fighters, unless you know one, I don't know, um, who went to college. But um, but watch what he did because you guys are going to be kind of modeling your thing after this. All right. So um, after you read this, it's called WMDs, Weapons of Mass Destruction. Um, number five in Springboard Activity 1.9 is a soapstone. It's just a graphic organizer, and soapstone stands for speaker, audience, occasion, purpose, subject, and tone. All right. So you're going to go through and you're going to analyze that WMD's interview with all those things. So first, we're going to look at speaker. Let's do this one together. So the speaker of this is, is the author. So the speaker is Brian O'Connor. He's the one who is telling us this story about his day with Chuck. So you'll notice it says, what does the reader know about the writer? So what do you know about? Uh, Brian O'Connor. So I can tell after reading WMDs, I can tell that he really didn't know much about um, UFC fighters, so he must not have many UFC fighters in his life. This is probably kind of like the first time he's talking to a UFC fighter personally. Um, and I can also tell that he was maybe a little intimidated by Chuck at first, but who wouldn't be? My God, he's probably scary. Um, so, so now that's my analysis, but now I need to back it up with text support, okay? So I need to find the text that gave me that impression. So if I say that I can tell that he doesn't know much about Chuck, then I need to find the piece of text that proves he doesn't, he didn't know much about Chuck. So then you lift that out and you put that in the last column. So I wrote here, he said, but then you start talking to Chuck and your clarity becomes clouded. So you, what you thought about him is kind of clouded. It's not the same as it was before. And then you learn that nearly 80% of the Ultimate Fighters have some college education. So he learned something. He was kind of surprised that, oh my gosh, 80% of these guys who are fighters have some sort of education. So something he didn't know before. 
so he must not be too familiar um, with with fighters, UFC fighters. Then I wrote one of my other pieces of analysis was that I can tell he is intimidated by Chuck's appearance and I pulled out the text that proves that. So he said he has a thick coil of a neck and I really like his voice there. You can tell he's kind of intimidated because he didn't just say, well, this guy's got a big neck. He's like a thick coil of a neck, um, which definitely conveys a different feel, right? That's why word choice diction is so important. And then he also said he can uh, make your brain trickle out your nose. That sounds fun, right? So those both kind of convey like, whoa, this guy is big, this guy could hurt me. Um, so I kind of felt like maybe he was a little intimidated by just his appearance. I think after he talked with him, he wasn't that intimidated. So you guys can use mine there if you want, or you can do a different, what you felt like the speaker, um, what you, you picked up from the speaker. Uh, and then you're gonna fill out the rest of that graphic organizer. So you're gonna do the occasion, what was the occasion surrounding this interview, who is the target audience, who do you think the interviewer was trying to reach by writing this piece on Chuck, um, what was the purpose, why did he write this piece, what's the subject, that's pretty easy. Um, and then the tone, so what is his tone, what is his attitude towards Chuck and UFC fighting, this guy being a fighter. Um, so you're going to answer all those and then you're going to pull text to support your answer. Okay. Always very important to pull text evidence. Then in activity 1.9, you're going to the blog. So go to the blog, click on the 1.9 blog and you guys are going to write a quality response. All right. So at least two sentences. All right. And you're going to explain how O'Connor creates a narrative rather than a simple interview. So how did he make this more like a story? than just like, I asked him this question and he said this. I asked him this question and he said this. How is it more like a narrative? How is it more like a story? Because that's exactly what you're gonna do when you write your interview. Um, so how does he use details, who does voice to appeal to us, to appeal to his audience, okay? And now for activity 1.10, you guys are gonna look at just a transcript. So. Now, like the narrative was more like the story. The transcript is just um, the questions that O'Connor asked and then Chris's answers, okay? You guys will do this when you guys are interviewing your um, person that you choose to interview. This will probably be like what you do for your interview notes. You'll write down your question and then write down what your interviewee responded with. And then from that, you create your story, your narrative. So read through that. Um, read through that transcript and I want you guys to pay particular attention to what makes the transcript different from the narrative. How is it different to do um, this, ooh, sorry, um, than, than the story, all right? And then your job is to answer the check your understanding portion of 1.10, just the check your understanding portion, nothing else, all right? You don't have to do extra work that you don't have to do. So I put that right here in the announcements, you're gonna write two paragraphs, okay? The first paragraph, I want it to be five sentences of just the pros and cons of the transcript and the narrative form of an interview. So what are some good things about doing the transcript? What are some cons? What are some good things about the narrative? What are some drawbacks, all right? Five sentences with that. Then your second paragraph is going to be strategies that you might use to develop your questions. So what do you think you're gonna do about the questions that you're gonna ask your interviewee, the person you interview, and how might you change your questions as you interview? Because you want your um, person to give you good quality information, right? You want to kind of dig deep. So what could you do if you're in the middle of an interview and they're not giving you much? Um, how could you adjust? What could you change? Um, what could you do beforehand to prepare for that? I want you to write five sentences with that too, okay? So maybe pay attention to the questions that um, O'Connor Ask Chuck Liddell and um, see if that gives you any ideas. Remember, you're going to be writing, um, interviewing somebody about their post-secondary education experience. So whether they went to college, um, four-year college, two-year college, maybe they went to a trade school, um, maybe they did some sort of certificate program, but um, you're going to be interviewing about that. So kind of keep that in mind as you're writing these two paragraphs for Activity 1.10, all right? So... As always, I'm here if you need me. If you have any questions, reach out and I will certainly help you. I'm here for you guys, all right? 
So you guys take care, get these assignments done and in, and I will see you again next week. All right.